I would take a uh, regional approach here. I would take more troops into Iraq around 10,000 to thicken the Iraqi security forces. I'd have more trainers, advisors, a couple of aviation battalions so we could liberate Ramadi and Mosul. I'd get the Arabs together, Turkey, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia and say, okay guys, we're going into Syria. We're going to take ISIL down and we're going to get rid of Assad. You're going to help us hold the territory. To some, it is just another in a long line of political gas baggery designed to scare voters. But the facts are more evident than the millions of federal employees who today are scrambling to ensure their bank accounts haven't been emptied or their credit cards crashed. This, the latest records hack, allegedly by the Chinese. And it should be the final warning of a moment in war that is about to be repeated. Another day that some say, one specifically, says may very well live in infamy. Let us then welcome back the most perfectly and thankfully infamous duo in broadcast news, CNBC, uh, <laughs> she's got that jersey on, CNBC contributor, entrepreneur, and best-selling author, and also just bandwagon jumping Chicago Blackhawks fan, Carol Roth, Long along with columnist Blackhawk and fan. host of the Todd Schoenberger Show, Todd Schoenberger. It, it, Todd, it's a pleasure to have you, although I'm sorry you have to be a part of this now because this has been a long, ongoing thing all hockey season long. That's okay. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while you got it there, young lady. Let's go ahead and get Ori to original it. Original six, Ed. You should be giving us some original <laughs> six love. Hey, that's all right. But, you know, Bruins fan, Blackhawks fan, look, I'm just hoping for a good series. Now let's move on. Boy, are you going to start some arguments here. Let's start a couple of arguments, shall we? Carol, I'm going to come to you first. And Lindsey Graham blames the president for the current data breach. Apparently, the Chinese got a hold of us and, and the federal government, if you will, claiming that this could be a cyber Pearl Harbor if measures aren't taken to avoid another such hack. OK, look, using the Pearl Harbor reference may have some people very upset, but it is a war, if you will. And second of all, the president at responsibility for this, isn't he going a little far here, Carol? Uh, well, first of all, I do agree that this is probably the biggest threat that we are facing here in the United States, especially on our soil. I think that a cyber threat potentially could be imminent. And with all the hacks that we've seen, not only at the government level, but on our, our financial system at JP Morgan, I think that this is a serious concern. Now, I'm happy to blame the president for a lot of things. I don't know that you can blame him for this in particular, but the fact of the matter is he probably is a little lackadaisical when it comes to making this a priority. I think that this really needs to be elevated to a top priority in the public sector and in the private sector, because it's something that could bring things to a screeching halt here in the United States. Todd, I think that's fair because certainly the president is. That's where the buck stops on a regular, everyday basis. We have been leading ourselves right. to this, I think, for a very long time, certainly during the president's administration, maybe even back before that. But maybe he does bear a lot of responsibility here for not being a little more serious about this, like many people would say he's not been serious about a lot of things. Well, when you're the executive in charge, this is one of the things that you have to control. I mean, you want to focus on national security issues. It's not always about violence or hostile events. It's actually about something like cybercrime. So when you start thinking about our world in an electronic universe, it's very difficult to think that if, we do, if this isn't taken down or we don't have a major attack, yeah, that's going to really cripple all of us economically. Now, certainly, Lindsey Graham is looking to make some hay here, and he has to make some noise because he wants to get into the presidential race. Many people feel that he is a longest of long shot, maybe. And Todd, here's to you because he made a second quote when the comment was made to him that a lot of people are just worn out by war. And basically, the senator said, well, then, if you're worn out by war, don't vote for me because I'm telling you what's coming. Now, there's two ways to look at this. He's right. Many people will say that if there's going to be peace in the Middle East, maybe America does have to be there on a regular basis and we do have to fight the war. But, Todd, let's look at it from the other side. Americans are sick and tired of hearing about going to war and we never seem to have a plan to actually get it done and come out on the winning side. And that's the thing, because when you go to war, there's usually an end to the war. So we have not seen that, and that's why Americans are fed up with this. Look, Lindsey, what, what he's doing, though, is really going out and, and he's manufacturing fear. So, And it's so early in the campaign, he only has 2% right now, and he feels that he needs to do something that's going to be really out, outlandish. And that's why he's saying this. He's just going to keep fighting, fighting, fighting. But when he will actually gain traction is if something does happen on American soil, then that's probably when you're going to hear more about Lindsey Graham. So, Carol, let's be nonpartisan here then. Is the senator fear mongering? 
I certainly think he is fear mongering a bit. Uh, but I do think that uh, ISIS or ISIL or cockroaches, whatever name you want to use for them, <laughs> I, I think that they are a real threat. I think the challenge is, as you identify, that people are sick of wars that we do not win, that have no logical conclusion or no good outcome. I certainly think that most of America uh, wants to get rid of ISIL as a threat, and I think that there's a way to do it. I'm not sure that boots on the ground um, makes all the, the sense in the world, so I'm not sure that people will be jumping on the Lindsey Graham bandwagon, but as Todd said, it's a great way for him to get his brand out there, there and look, we're talking about him. Got to make some noise, and then again, if something does happen, he's right. That's where it'll all come to bear. Todd, back to you. Most Americans support a path to legal status for immigrants. Now, this is a Pew poll saying that 72% of Americans agreed there should be a way for such immigrants to gain legal status. But here is the key. If certain requirements are met was part of the questioning here. And Todd, we don't know what those requirements are. That's right. And I th I'm going to guess that the requirements will be make it as if you're actually an American citizen already. Look, the, here's the thing. It's nice to know that Americans are a, li are a little bit more open minded by the fact that, OK, we need to have a, a, a list of uh, items or some type of criteria necessary to become that American citizen. But nobody's going to understand or even agree what that what those the list of items is going to be. So there you might have this feel good notion because nobody wants to say, oh, you're not welcome in my my house, but yet again, you're welcome in my house if you act and do certain things. So, Carol, is this pretty much a useless poll because we still have that codicil on the end? I think it is, and I think that the house that, that Todd was talking about, let's flip it around. If we were in, if I went to Mexico, if I went to Nigeria, if I went to France, could you imagine if I went there on vacation and decided I wanted to stay and become a citizen and all of a sudden I'm going to demand citizenship? Nobody would think that that's appropriate. So why is that appropriate in our house? If we made it easier for people to work here and then we got more benefits out of them working here, these people wouldn't need a fake path to citizenship. You could just have them go back and reapply if they really wanted to be citizens or they could work here and we could get a win-win out of this. It's a ridiculous statement. And there are still people wondering where are the jobs going to come from, but oh my, that's a question left for another day. About a minute or so we have left. Let's finish with this. Facebook defending the sharing of a video. This was seen and this is overseas the NSPCC, mm -hmm. which is basically one of the British boards that looks at such things. It, it, they say, wait a minute now. This is a screaming baby being dunked this is on Facebook. People say this is child abuse. All right, now, Carol, I guess, where do we draw the line on this? Is this child abuse or are people just, again, overreacting? Uh, I, I think in this particular case, it was child abuse. I, I watched a, a blurred out copy of the video and without even being able to see the whole thing, I was sick to my stomach. And it's one of those things, you know it when you see it, and that should not be out there in any way, shape or form. I was completely disgusted. But it's, it. it's just, a, it's a, I'm going to play the other side, just a baby crying. No, it wasn't a baby crying. Baby it was, was a baby held up by its it arms, being you know dragged around like a rag doll. I mean, it was really, really upsetting. What do you think, Todd? Yeah, I think the baby was crying, and, and that's the thing. But here's here's what I don't understand. You're dunking the baby in this bucket. What are you videotaping it for? What's the purpose of that? You you give a bath to a child, you won't videotape it every single time. There's clearly something there, and it did look like abuse to me as well. Todd, have you been on Facebook anytime soon? How dare you ask why people videotape anything that goes on Facebook? I mean, some of the stuff that goes there, you have to ask yourself if there's any brain waves actually working or any electricity going between ear to ear. That's another story altogether. Uh, but we'll, I agree with that. There, there you go. All right. Carol, look, good luck to, to your Chicago Blackhawks. My Boston Bruins are not there, so I'm going to wish you good luck on it. I'll be the good sport, as we all are in hockey. And Todd <laughs> thanks, Schoenberger, sir. thanks a lot for joining us. Guys, have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Coming up next, where do you draw the line on sexual assault? The conversation begins right here on Midpoint.